definitely. Well, as you said, uh, we are a women of color owned uh, racial and gender equity consulting group. So what that means is that we go into schools and companies and nonprofit organizations and design steps for them to be for their spaces to be more equitable. So that could look like um, trainings or workshops on uh, white supremacy culture values, or it could look like discussions of consent or sexual harassment prevention trainings or guiding them to create an internal DEI council. So, uh, but the reason why we do it is because we want to center the BIPOC folks in the room and and really center the most marginalized, whether that's, that's the black, indigenous, trans, or disabled communities. And having come from industries ourselves, um, and I think uh, er Erica Hart refers to, refers to herself as being a survivor of predominantly white institutions. And us having come from different industries, we wanna create spaces where folks are, are actively involved, where there is community accountability, where, uh, we don't have to follow respectability politics all the time and um, just be more human and equitable in spaces. Mm. I think, I think that work is, it's something that even, even before, you know, the past, you know, 10 or so months, it's, it's, it was such important work, but, you know, for, for, for many reasons, it's, it's definitely been at the forefront of many people's minds. So I am so glad that we're able to introduce you all to people because they might be looking for, who are the right people to approach because, you know, I don't know about you, but about the people on the stream or about you, but you know, it, it's hard to lean on the marginalized, the people of marginalized communities in your uh, workplaces. And, and it really is work that should be done by people who A, want to do the work, B, are trained to do the work. And you should just hire people to be focused on that work. So I'm so glad that you're all doing it. Um, can you talk a little bit about how how you came to be and how, you know, the three of you decided to, to, to take on doing this work. Yeah, definitely. And, and just to kind of piggyback off of what you're saying, everything that we do do was absolutely built off of so many scholars and activists and elders who came before us. And a, a lot, a lot of them being black and indigenous, non-binary trans women. So our, we feel like our role as non-black POC is to come into the space and just and uh, hold accountability and again, center, center the most marginalized. So um, yeah, we, and your question was about how we came together, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, before I go off. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, well, two co-founders, Natalie and Valine, whom I love dearly. Uh, and Natalie has actually been one of my best friends from middle school and JLo, you know her too. Cause for those who don't know me and JLo knew each other. He cast me in my first play. <laughs> um, so, uh, Natalie, uh, knew her from middle school and, uh, we've been best friends since then. And she had just come to LA, uh, and was doing DE and I work at Asia's advancing justice. Um, and Valine, we had met in college doing vagina monologues at first and through some other sort of artsy activisty clubs and we were working with UCLA after we graduated to help them uh, sort of put on this show that uh, that um, talked about race power and privilege in sort of a one-on-one -on -one way to all the incoming students and um, it was right when Me Too movement kind of re really set off and um, I was actually on set when the, the day that all the news about Harvey Weinstein just hit the fan. And I remember just like looking around and people just not having the tools or the language or the spaces to talk about consent or really break down consent or um, understand how to deal with all of this uh, movement that was happening around us and also pain that was being uncovered. And um, just kind of, <laughs> Avengers assembled, N Natalie and Valine was like, y'all, like we, we have something, you know, we all, um, we want to talk about this DE and I work in a way that um, allows women and, and women of color to, to talk about it. Cause a lot of times it's people in suits delivering mm -hmm. sexual harassment training. So that's how Shift was born. And since then we've been uh, helping places out like Coachella to Planned Parenthood to uh, South by Southwest. That's amazing. I, I think, 
it's so important. I, I love what you say about letting letting women, women of color be able to, you know, really lead these conversations. Because I remember, I think you and I may have been texting about this, but I've, I've gone through, a, I went through this terrible sexual harassment training experience once, where it was, was as you said, it was a person in a suit. And, and we, you know, the staff came in with such an open heart because we wanted to learn. And we were asking these really complex questions because we wanted to know how to navigate the complexities of, of our workplace with, with people from such various perspectives. And all of the answers that this suit gave us was, well, here's how to make sure you don't get sued. And we're like, no, 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 no. What we want to know, we don't, we, we can avoid getting sued, but what we want to talk about is morally, how can we be open open-hearted people and the answers he had was all about the legal world and it was just the most frustrating experience <laughs> absolutely yeah oh i can't believe yeah. you know um thinking about the work that you all do i i remember um victor vasquez um of x casting who uh is a good friend of mine and i went to to school with in college he he had he quoted somebody uh, he attributed his quote to someone and I'm, i apologize i can't remember it but i wanted to read it off um, it makes me think of the work you all do and how important it is. He said, when you hire BIPOC folks into a broken culture, you don't fix the culture, you break the people. Dang. And I think that applies not only to, definitely to BIPOC communities, but also people of various marginalized communities. And I think that the work that you all do is, is trying to make sure that the culture is safe for people of marginalized communities to do their work, to just exist and, 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 and create healthy environments for everyone. It benefits everyone, don't you think? Yeah, and I think, and what we've, what elders <laughs> have been talking about that we as SHIFT have really been sitting with is this idea of humanization because white supremacy culture voids us of our humanization and, and who we are and, and the systems that we often work with in day to day value our labor more than we are as people and and it's about it's not just about making a work environment or a space environment safer for BIPOC it's about making it better for everyone there because it's a collective whole thing of bringing back this humanization of it and um, so often it's diversity isn't it is not enough is never been enough right diversity um, uh, kind of a parallel that Natalie uses is like, you know, a di diversity is inviting people to the party. Um, in inclusion is inviting people to the dance floor to dance and equity is having everyone add to the, to the playlist. So it's all songs that they actually enjoy. And mm. I feel like that speaks to um, the quote you just mentioned. Cause it's like, we can't, the systems we're in aren't made to serve BIPOC. So we have to, actively work on re recreating the systems and there are ways to do that um but it's it takes work <laughs> mm -hmm, and community mm -hmm. can can you talk a little bit about the approach that that you all at shift take in in those like trainings and those those workshops that you do with with organizations oh yeah so sort of uh, kind of how we go and in, go into the work in, in mm -hmm. regards to that yeah um I think I'd like to share back some of the values that we step into the space with. Um, uh, so, you know, we'll often go in to workshops or um, facilitated dialogues, or even just when, when we're doing one-on-one -on -one work with our client, um, we try to put out agreements. And um, one of them is that stuff gets messy. Stuff is messy. It's not linear anti uh racism work is not linear. So we have to be willing to be uncomfortable and be willing to lean into the generative tension that exists when we're creating stuff and creating systems that again, have, ha are not made to center, center BIPOC. Um, something else that we really approach our work with and this feels important. This is from Adrian uh, Marie Brown, who is, has a, an amazing book called Emergent Strategy. Um, and she talks about how relationship building is community building. So at the smallest level, the interactions we have with each other, if we can, if we can build equity amongst ourselves, and then that is on the micro what can be expanded on a larger level. Hmm. Um, also ideas of we're not experts, we're, we're students, we're continuous students um, of this work. So um, 
just give acknowledging that the knowledge isn't ours and and that uh we are learning with people as we grow and and then one that also feels really that I love the most I think is uh, when when trying to think of creative solutions or think of other futures um that decenter whiteness it's about thinking about possibility and not scarcity so we have to reimagine and be willing to reimagine because that is literally a tool of revolution. Mm, mm, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. One th- I love I love how you talk about how we're all students cuz one thing that I've been reflecting on as I've been on my journey to to be a better advocate to be more uh, more anti-racist in everything that I do and and be you know a, a better person generally it is the fact that the learning never stops. I think that the way that we as a society evolve, we're always learning. If, I'm sure that if I were to go back and, and, and look at how I approached my life or how I treated other people or how I spoke of certain things in the past, there's probably a lot of things that nowadays as the type of person I am now, I wouldn't be proud of. And, and it doesn't mean that I was or am a bad person. It means that I'm continuing to grow. And I think that's what it is with all of us. I think that there's a lot of people who may be like, I went through the training, I checked the box, I'm good now. Um, and, and that's not really how it is. I think it's a frame of mind, right? That you're always learning and it's just this always listening. Yeah, always learning and always listening and realizing that harm happens. It's it's a part of like human relations, but that's, that's of course, we should try to minimize it to, to their best capacity. And some harm is... Uh, much worse than other harms. Um, but uh, just acknowledging that it happens. So how do we move in a place of, of compassion? And especially when it's, when it's amongst two people of like, who are uh, trying to achieve the same thing, <laughs> you know, how do we, and that's a world where I think is centering more equity, where we're able to, to listen to each other better and can make mistakes with each other because that's, I make mistakes all the time. I say the wrong things all the time. Um, And it's, it's a journey. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Ah, it's so beautiful. Well, I I wanted to ask you in the work that you've been doing, are there any, are there any stories in the work that you Mm. all have been doing that come to mind? I'd love to hear some, not, I mean, success stories sounds weird, but just beautiful stories. Just like, let's just be happy. (laughs) Let's just be happy. Well, now, now that you're speaking of just kind of looking back on the past, I um, one of my favorite memories is uh, we were going to a middle school to talk about the power of language, right? And how the words we use uh, can have harmful effects when it comes to their impact uh, if they're speaking about uh, homophobia or racism or whatever it is. And so we were there and something we like to do with Shift is also, we're all kind of come from an artist background. So storytelling is a big part of what we do as well in certain situations. So um, I was telling a story about how through middle school, I was extremely, uh, would extreme, uh, like a lot of, what's the word, self-deprecation? Yeah, a lot of that. So being racist towards myself before anybody else could be. A lot of, I would, um, I would call myself a terrorist. I would call myself uh, like uh, uh, a monkey, you know, all the things, all the things, these South Asian stereotypes, uh, and I would play it off as humor. And, but over time kind of realizing the impact of that and, and, um, and just being super honest to these middle schoolers of where I was and, and the harm I had created then to myself and, and to my communities. And um, I just remember uh, a kind of a, a girl coming up afterwards and just like really like looking at me in the eye and being like, thank you so much for sharing that story. Um, that That's exactly how I feel. And I also feel really seen and also identifies queer. So for her seeing, I think another w- queer woman of color was um, at a, as a middle schooler was, was really powerful. So that's mm. one of my favorite moments. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's great. And I love, I love that not only are you, are you all at Shift able to to work with businesses and workplaces that obviously need to do this work? But even starting from a very young, a young age. Yeah, I mean that's where the change is, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's where the change is. 
Oh, God bless God. Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Gen Z holding it down. Holding, they are holding it down <laughs> continuously. Bless you. <laughs> We are, well, I, we are with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to ask about one, one other thing. You know, um, we, we have links to your website on, on our website and on our digital program and everything. But one thing that I've loved that's been popping off is your Instagram feed. Can we talk a little bit about that? You, you all have amazing, you know, the, obviously I want people to be able to reach out to you all, consult with you all, hire you all. But, but if nothing else, an amazing resource is your your social media feed? Can you talk a little bit about what's available there for people to see and where, where what's yes. what's the what's the tag? Definitely. So it's Shift Consulting Co. That's at Shift Consulting Co. And um, we uh, we try to make it a place where folks can go to for resources. I think that that's one big thing we aim for it to be. Um, so, uh, like there'll be if you go on the on our Instagram page, you might see. Um, five tips to have dif- to take on five questions to ask yourself before engaging in a difficult conversation, which is particularly good about uh, when you're thinking about friends or family, whether you want to talk to them, whether you're supposed to engage or not. Um, we also have other resources about um, how to be a better ally or what is community accountability, what is respectability politics and all those sorts of things. So please do check us out. We're Shift Consulting Co. Say hello. <laughs> I'm Kosser yeah. um, because uh, we want to continue growing our community. Cool. Well, in, in addition to this really important work you do, I want everyone to know that you should check out Kosser as well. She's an amazing actress, artist, and everything. Um, I had the great fortune. She said I cast her in her first play. I didn't even realize it was your first play. She was just totally talented, was. and I cast her. <laughs> <laughs> and and one thing, and, and and one thing that I was just she's she's a part of an, a hilarious troupe called the Get Brown. And one one thing on your uh, Instagram feed that came up recently that I just lost my mind at was your impersonation of was was it Padma Padma Lakshmi Padma Lakshmi and you were eating you were you were eating Wonder Bread and it was just the funniest thing so everyone should also check that out love I love her that's and that's like no shade either I love her she's so <laughs> cool man <laughs> oh so good so good well um one one more thing um can you just shout out so I think Tossie's gonna put on the the chat for the stream but can mm-hmm. you also say Koster if anybody on the stream wants to interact with shift and wants to um, find out more reach out see if they can um, work with you all where, where, where should they go yes well they can go to www.shiftingculture.co awesome. uh, so that's shiftingculture.co and then our instagram is at shift consulting co cool yeah, and you shared with us a video touch. we have a we have a video Yay. to um, share with everyone and, and can you give us a little bit of context for this video Yes, absolutely. So we had the pleasure of working with one of our partners, Speak Out, to create an e-course for students um, entering um, kind of, well, it's for all students, but basically it really breaks down, we like to call it like our race power privilege 101, really, really breaks down from even um, what is oppression, what is institutionalized racism, uh, what is, uh, what is, uh, all the things um, in a way that we're really excited about and it leads students through. Um, so you can find out more about that at speak out, uh, speakoutnow.org or eCourse. And I wanted to share back, uh, one of the videos in the eCourse is our facilitators going through this exercise uh, called an I am poem, um, which is all about reimagining. Like I was talking about earlier, this idea of reimagining being a tool of change and of revolution. So wanted to share that back with you all um, uh, in hopes that, you know, it's it's something positive. It's something hopeful. Make your own I am poem if you're up for it. So thank you for sharing. Let's see this video. Thank you so much. Bye. Another world is possible. I'm a queer black creator. I am my ancestors wildest dream. I am a part of something bigger. I am deepening my roots. I am allowed to exist in all my identities. My medicine is using the art of theater to empower and heal tribal communities. My medicine is music and laughter. My medicine is books, froyo, and dark chocolate. I dream of a new world. I dream of a world that values indigenous knowledge and experiences. My dream is a world with public safety. 
I dream of a world where sidewalks are lined with community gardens full of fruits and vegetables so that no one will ever go hungry. I dream of a world where we can rest. I dream of liberation of all people. I commit to creating a more just and equitable society for future generations. I commit to empowering my people and living unapologetically. And I commit to trying, failing, and getting back up again. I am committed to anti-racism. And I commit to co-creating it. Big ups to shifting the culture. Big ups to Kasra Mohammed. Um, thank you for that conversation. I could talk to her forever, so we had to we had to end it because she and I could be on the phone and just chat forever. But um, that was I, really I freaking it. awesome. And if you're watching this uh, and you have access to the channel, definitely check them out on IG. I put the link in the channel as and in, in addition to uh, Shifting Culture Co. Uh, website. So definitely check. That was really freaking awesome. And I didn't know you were. <laughs> I had seen that uh, that uh, the bread with the with Lakshmi. Oh. <laughs> it's so funny. She, she calls. She said, "We we got it from Safi Way. You you guys should watch it. I don't do it justice. Y'all should so watch good. it. So good. <laughs>